Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us. As most of us are aware, the British Labour Party has been embroiled and engulfed around issues of anti-Semitism and it being anti-Semitic, its members being anti-Semitic, much of that being directed directly at uh, Jeremy Corbyn himself, who is the head of the party. But the brunt of the attacks have been borne and felt by a woman who is black, who is Jewish, and a key Labour Party activist. Last week, I interviewed John Pullman about the film he made around this issue called Witch Hunt, which is about her story and the story of anti-Semitism and the battle inside the Labour Party itself. And Jackie Walker herself joins us here. She's been suspended from the party for being anti-Semitic. Now she's been expelled from the party uh, and joins us to talk about that and all manner of other things related to this. And Jackie Walker, welcome. Good to have you with us here at The Real News. Thank you. Can I just correct you for one thing? You, I'm always standing to be... Go ahead. Yes, please. I've actually not been expelled for being anti-Semitic. And it's a really interesting thing. Okay. Um, because that's what the media is saying. But I, one of the reasons they couldn't expel me for anti-Semitism is that they knew I would take them to court and they, they would lose. So they got me on something that's like, talking, you know, being offensive or bringing the Labour Party into disrepute. So it's, it's, it's quite important that no, they actually did evidence that they would have needed to do that to me. But so, let me a couple of questions here that I want to take us back to two and a half years ago when this whole sojourn began for you. Um, uh, but, but how odd and how strange or how frequent is it that someone actually is pushed out of the Labour Party like this? Um, well, if you'd asked me that three or four years ago, <laughs> it would be very unusual. There was a period, um, something like 20 years ago, when there was another purge uh, by the right of the Labour Party by um, uh, Tony Blair's, um, under Tony Blair's regime of, uh, of an organisation called Militant. But we've never seen something like this before. Uh, since the... The witch hunt has been going on, I would say it's become pretty commonplace. So let's go back two and a half years to, to this conference that was held on anti-Semitism inside the Labour Party and where you were secretly taped, but you didn't know you were being taped when you were making comments. This is where this began, correct? Where you That's made a couple of comments, one had to do with um, that the Holocaust, memorializing the Holocaust should be expanded beyond just the Jewish victims of the Holocaust, and you're questioning the definition of anti-Semitism. Let's, let's get that straight. Mm. Well, tell, tell us what actually happened. That, that, again, is not actually quite what's happened. I mean, it, it, what's really interesting is how successful the mainstream media has been at supporting this false narrative. Um, what I was actually suggesting... Uh, was that Holocaust Memorial Day should be widened. So at the moment, what it does is it only mem memorializes um, people who have suffered genocide post the Nazi period, which excludes a whole load of people. Um, but in terms of my particular interest, of course, it excludes the people from the Belgian Congo who 30 years before the Nazis um, something like 12 million of them were killed by King Leopold of the uh, Belgians. And, of course, it excludes everybody who was uh, a victim of genocide um, during the African Holocaust. In fact, one of the accusations that was made against me at my um, for my hearing was that I dared to call it an African Holocaust. You were condemned for saying it was an African Holocaust, what happened in the Congo? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, because apparently, even though, for example, black people have been referring to what's happened to them as a Holocaust since the 1920s, um, and Churchill referred to the Armenian Holocaust, apparently now, in the Labour Party, we're only allowed to use the word Holocaust if it refers to what happened under the Nazis. So I guess, let's just talk about this for just a moment, because this is where I can, where I, I can, I've heard since this happened, and I hear this often from friends of mine in the Jewish community as well, um, that the Holocaust, A, is something 
extremely special when it comes to the Jewish community because it was a, an effort to annihilate the Jewish people in Europe by the Nazis. So the Holocaust Day is the Holocaust Day, and expanding it kind of diminishes, people argue, the Holocaust. Though I'd throw in here that one of my main intellectual mentors, Abraham Engelman, who survived the Holocaust, didn't join the memorial himself because it didn't also memorialize the five million others who were killed in the camps along with six million Jews who were killed in the camps. So it's always been this really touchy issue that kind of hones in for some into anti-Semitism saying, there you go trying to minimize what happened to us as Jews. And so, so, so you, know, you know what I'm saying? I can see in some ways why this kind of rubs some people the wrong way and why that could cause some dissension and a real discussion. Well, one thing I want to say is that there was another people who were singled out for total annihilation, of course, and that was the Romani people. Yes. And and so we get into this horrible area of sort of negotiation, don't we? Was this worse? Was that worse? What's the function of Holocaust Memorial Day? My positioning is I don't want to have a hierarchy of Holocaust or genocide. I think... Of course, um, I can understand why many Jewish people feel like that. But being both Jewish and black, I'd like some appreciation as well as to why, for me as a person of color, that I would want some recognition that actually the Holocaust that happened to people of African descent was also unique. and. It remains unique because as people of color in Europe and America, we are still suffering those consequences. And that makes it pretty unique as well. So every genocide is unique. Every story is special. Every Holocaust has a political purpose. It has its own context. And, and what I want is for not, uh, not to make this smaller, but actually that the message, the message of the six million Jews who died and the six million others who also died is that it should never happen again, not just to Jews, but to anybody. It's never again to anybody. And if we really want that message to mean something, then we have to consider how we're commemorating this. So the, the other issue we talked about a moment ago, because we could spend a long time talking about this, I wish we had more time to do this, um, because I think it's really an important subject. Um, but the other issue is when you took umbrage at using certain definitions of anti-Semitism, that, that we debated and discussed it when we talked to John Pullman about the film. Um, but let's talk a bit about that. So how, what would be a definition of anti-Semitism that you would find acceptable and you think should be part of the discussion that's not part of the discussion? I think hatred of Jews because they're Jews. I cannot understand the problem with that as a definition. I mean, I just can't understand the problem with that. And the IHRA definition that we have now, I mean, let's face it, that was sort of foisted on the Labour Party. And in fact, although according to the British media, this is a generally accepted definition, in fact, what we know is it's only been accepted in eight countries, eight countries in the world. And one of the reasons, of course, it's so contentious is because of the way that the sub-clauses of this definition really include criticism of the state of Israel as it functions now. And, 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 and as Shakespeare might say, and, and there's the rub. And there's, <laughs> and there's the rub. So, so, so the question becomes, uh, well, let me take a step back for a moment. I'm very curious, just on, a, on a personal and political note, have you heard from Jeremy Corbyn about any of this yet? Any of the leadership around him talked to you since this has happened to you? Of course. Of course I haven't heard from Jeremy Corbyn, and I wouldn't expect to. You know, he in the, in the position he is, he's the leader of the Labour Party, he has nothing to do with disciplinary matters. 
I mean, there, so uh, there, are, there are a number of groups that I want to talk about for a moment to kind of understand what just happened. There's the group Momentum, which is part of the left of the Labour Party, if I'm correct, right? You... Uh, it's more complex <laughs> than that. Yes, I, f okay. I figured it would be. I figured it would be. But I, so, and then there's the Jewish Voices of Labour, and there's yes. and there's the Jewish Labour Movement. So they're, they're all very different. And so they're very different. right. And you were also pushed out of momentum. Am I correct about that? Yeah. Well, no. I was pushed out of being the vice chair. Yes. Right. Of, but in fact, I resigned from momentum. And you resigned because? Oh, because. I could see the direction that the person who is the chair of Momentum, who also, by the way, is the owner of the database, um, I could see the political direction that he was taking the organization in, and it wasn't one that I was happy to support. So where does this take Labour, and where does it at this moment? Because clearly... All the tensions around Brexit and the, the negotiations going on between Corbyn and May at the moment, and 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 all that. And maybe there may be new elections. Um, a number of Labour Party people have left. Some of the Jewish members of the party have left. Some have stayed. And this could become a central issue in the election, and also in moving forward in terms of policy, both on racism, anti-Semitism, anti and about Israel. I mean, th this kind of kind of is a very explosive moment. It seems for British politics. Oh, it's an extraordinary moment for British politics. But I think one thing I might differ with you sure. about, um, because we saw what happened in the last general election. We were told that anti-Semitism would be a major part of the election. In fact, it wasn't. It wasn't a major part of the election. And all the um, experience that people have door to door, knocking on people's doors, people aren't talking about anti-Semitism. They're talking about austerity, they're talking about the National Health Service, they're talking about um, hospitals, schools, they're not talking about anti-Semitism. So that's the first thing. But another comment I, I want to make is I do think the issue of race in this election, particularly because of the proximity of Brexit, if there were to be an election, I think that would yet again be a hot potato. And I think, in fact, the issue of race in the Labour Party is is almost now a, a, a toxic ish, issue, really. So where do you go from here with the Labour Party? You've been an activist for a long time. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to spend my time uh, trying to get back into the Labour Party. I've actually got... <laughs> I've got other things to do. And, um, you know, one of the things I want to do is to start a dialogue about race in the Labour movement, which isn't the Labour Party. I mean, I think the way, I mean, what, what people perhaps don't know about what happened to me, and one of the reasons that I withdrew from the hearing was I was faced with racist abuse being included within the Labour Party evidence against me. So what that would have meant was I would have been standing there or sitting there giving evidence. And as I was turning over the pages or being asked, I would have seen anti-black racist comments against me. Now, my solicitors asked twice for that material to be withdrawn and the Labour Party refuse to do that, or shall we be clear, not the Labour Party, but the Labour Party disciplinary unit. So the whole issue of, of race and the position of minorities within the Labour Party, I think is something that needs to be examined. I mean, um, for example, last year, from what I've, I know, had the smallest amount of BAME candidates ever going up for winnable seats. Um, so there is this real concentration on one group and other groups who are actually excluded from power at all levels from the Labour Party. That's not just people of colour, that's Romani people, 
that's Muslim people, excluded at, PL, at the parliamentary level, at the structural level, at local councillor levels. There doesn't seem to be a sort of an equity about how that is being dealt with. And I think, I think as the left, we really start needing, we're needing to really think about what's going on here. Well, I think this is, a, I wish we had a great deal more time because we've only touched the surface of, I think, some of the critical issues that both Britain, the Labour yeah. Party yeah. is facing. Um, and I want to thank you for your time, Jackie Walker, and look forward to uh, having more conversations with you about this and where this takes us around anti-Semitism, racism, labor and socialism and how this weird interaction we're in the midst of now and where it may take us. And uh, thank you so much for your work and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. And I'm Mark Stoney here with The Real News Network. Thank you all for joining us. Take care.